It's working. This thing is up and running and closer to being ready for business. In the last video, I just installed the conveyor belt. There were a lot of steps to get here, so let's get to it. I previously spent a bunch of time working on these roller guides. Well, I soon learned that this is not the way to keep the conveyor belt in line. The proper way is to crown the roller. That's where the roller is higher in the middle and lower on the outsides. As the conveyor rolls, it magically finds the center and stays there. This is how so many conveyor belts work and other things, such as a bandsaw. I'm sure there's some science behind it that explains why it works. I'm just gonna trust the science and go for it. All of the pieces for the motor and gearbox are ready to go. So I connected everything to give it a test. In this configuration, I had to lift up the gearbox a quarter inch to line it up with the motor. When I turned it on, it works great. It was smooth and quiet. The only issue at the moment is that the output of the gearbox is spinning in the wrong direction that I needed. I first tried to swap the wires to see if that would change the direction of the motor, but that didn't work. So instead, I'll just float the gearbox upside down. The motor mechanism will be mounted to the side of the lift, so I made a shelf for it using 3 quarter inch plywood. The shelf is large enough to fit the entire motor and gearbox mechanism, and it has angled supports to keep it really sturdy. Even though the mechanism will be secure to the shelf, I still wanted to make sure there's no vibration noise. I used some of the extra neoprene for the conveyor belt to be used as a buffer between the stuff and the wood of the shelf. Now, because the gearbox is flipped around, I had to add some blocks to raise it up even higher to be in line with the motor. I test fit the shelf in place, but unfortunately, it sat too high for the bottom roller. So I cut off two inches from the bottom. Next, I located and punched eight holes for the mechanisms, four for the gearbox and four for the motor. I punched holes in the neoprene buffers that'll go underneath. Now, because the gearbox needed to be raised up just a pinch higher, I put two layers of neoprene underneath it. I test fit the pieces to make sure it all fit well. I painted the shelf black to match the lift, and then I attached everything for real, securing it with nuts and bolts. Some of it was a little tricky because I used hardware that I already had, but I managed to get it all locked down. I powered it up to make sure it still ran well. The motor shelf was ready, so I brought it over to mount on the machine. I lined it up and screwed it to the side. Sometime later, I'll swap out the screws with bolts, but this will work for now. I hooked it up to the bottom roller and flipped the switch. It worked! And just as I had hoped, it was running smoothly and quietly. It's time to crown the rollers. And to make the crown, I'm just going to build up layers of black tape. 
I'm going to start by crowning the bottom roller. And it'll be so much easier to do with the motor on to spin the roller as I unload the tape. I started by layering wide and working more towards the center, making a plateau about five or six inches wide. I used about one and a half rolls of tape for this roller. I figured there was a good chance that one crown would do the trick of fixing the tracking issues. It seems pretty common to have only one crown in a system. So before manually wrapping a second roller, I reattached the conveyor belt. Well, tried to. It was difficult getting the connecting pin back in place. So I had the boss lady help out. Okay, moment of truth. Time to see if the crown made of tape works. I was so ecstatic that one, the conveyor belt was spinning and two, it was tracking. I let it run for a few minutes to see what it would do. It favored one side, so I had a starting point of how to adjust it. I added a few strips of tape as it was rolling, making micro adjustments to work the conveyor towards the center, just trying to find that sweet spot. The potential point of failure at the moment is the connection from the metal rod to the wood of the roller. In the future, I'll probably add a pin that goes all the way through, but for the meantime, I just added a jerry rig version of a set screw that prevents me slipping. Just seeing this thing run is super exciting. It's one step closer to having a reliable, quiet, high capacity marble lift that I can use for all of my future marble machines. Okay, that's it for now. See ya. <laughs> Did I stop you guys? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's okay. It's okay. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning, muffin. Oh, these stretchy muffins. Mm. What else? Doobie doo. What else? Tell me. Yes, I did. 
Oh, you leave it. Good morning. No, you Okay. Good morning. Whoop. Get your chill. Good morning. Kick his legs. Hi. Good morning, buddies. You feel good this morning? Feel good morning? 